guys, Tim also with Drag Boss Garage. I'm back at APD, Advanced Product Design, and I'm with the number one man, Joe. So I'll kind of give you some information what we're talking about. I'm here now today with Darren. We're actually doing a prototype port setup for a 16 degree big block Chevy cylinder head that they have. It's called the Assassin. So Darren's here working on that. We've been doing some filming on that for the membership of Drag Boss Garage University and DMI, Darren Morgan Inductions. So stay tuned for that if you're members. But what we've got back here is some float bowls. Now I was talking with Joe about my own carburetor, which is Pro Systems, but I'm running. We're gonna switch that. Okay. He, he's gonna, we're gonna try a twin blade maybe All when right. the time comes. I just got the engine running. I'm gonna take it to the strip. We'll run it with what I've been running for 25 years, and then we'll see how your carburetor stands up. We'll All try right. a 4150 and then we'll try a twin blade. Okay. That'll be a good comparison. Absolutely. But, what I know of and what you guys know is this old float bowl. We've always seen this before. And now this is APD's proprietary design, but you can see the float there. It's, it's the same appearance and does the same thing as a holly, although it's not a holly and it's got way different design features. So this is what we're used to seeing. What Joe's gonna bring up to you now is this. It's something that they've been working on. I've never even really seen it, only in bits and pieces, but this is a float bowl that's designed for power adder applications. Now, once you get past 1300 horsepower with a power adder, you better start thinking about getting the fuel, keeping the fuel bowls full. Absolutely. So this is gonna lean in mostly to our boosted combinations. We okay. run these in a 4150 blow through, usually above about 1200 horsepower, regardless of fuel. And we run them in a Dominator or 4500 flange yep. carburetor, typically above about 1400 horsepower um, when we go to methanol. So the most common use for these is our alcohol blow-through carburetors. Um, we do two versions of that carb, the standard that we run up to about 2,000 horsepower and the Elite that we run above 2,000. Um, because of the methanol, the floats and needle and seats are perishable items in these. We sell rebuild kits, conversion kits, uh, float kits, all that is available either calling us here on the phone or on our website apdracing.com. What I'm going to go over today is installing floats in your blow-through bowl. Um, this is a very commonly asked question on the phone and somewhat complicated to explain without actually seeing it. So again, this bowl does have one float per needle and seat. Um, the, the float bowl does not have sight windows, so there is no window to set your fuel in. And that's done by design. Most of these applications are either belt driven or cam driven on the fuel pump. Mm. So there's gonna be varying fuel pressure, which would result in varying fuel level in the bowl. So for that reason, okay. we don't even put a sight in these. Let me bring this camera down because one of the things the guy said about the APD videos, they like to see up close. Absolutely. From this little angle, we can't see anything. Sure. Let me get the camera. Okay guys, this is it, up and close. So here it is, dual fuel floats. Amazing, okay. So there's two separate needle and seats, two separate floats, correct? Absolutely. And, and the way we set these, so I, I guess let's start at the beginning. Yep. Here's your needle and seat. There is a window in this needle and seat yes. for fuel to flow through. Yes. And it is very important in this bowl that that window be clocked up to the fuel opening. I just said that in a video. So we only set these floats in half turn increments. Got it. You do not want to put the needle and seat in with the window. Bingo. Off. It will absolutely restrict fuel flow. Okay. So if we're gonna start with this bowl here, we've got, uh, let me just show you the breakdown of all the pieces here. Yeah. You've got the, the bowl center. Yep. And then- And you make all this in house, All right, these Joey? are produced right okay. here in our Genoa, Ohio uh, facility. So you've got the side cover, yep. O-ring to the bowl, held on with four screws. It's gonna go on just like, just like that. Nice, yeah. And then there is our patented bottom feed insert here. This will direct the fuel from the needle and seat. So it's gonna come in the needle and seat, yep. go down the needle, and it's actually gonna run around the back of this insert and under the existing fuel in the bowl. So you can kind of see in there um, where the channels are yeah. that allow that fuel to flow in. So to me, I would say right now, it's gonna, with the with pressure that you got with a power adder, with a boost, Right now, I think that's going to affect or improve the, I'd say, foaming, fuel foaming. 
right? Yes, yeah, one hundred percent. When when we built this bowl, yeah, it was a no brainer to add our our bottom feed the uh, fuel insert uh, into this to get rid of the foam. In the okay, bowl. okay. And these do run fairly high pressure. Um, keep in mind, you know, the blow through is a sealed unit, so when an application like this has twenty pounds of boost, yep. It's seeing somewhere between 35 and 40 pounds of fuel pressure. We always have to have more fuel pressure than boost um, in order to not blow the fuel out of the float bowls. We had a display at PRI that had a standard float bowl okay. and it had our bottom feed float bowl and both at the same fuel pressure shared fuel system and the the foam in one versus the the lack of foam in the yes. other is really uh, astounding. Wow, yeah, the guys would like to see that for sure. Oh, yeah, we'll get it on there. The way we're gonna set our floats is with them turned upside down and the float now resting against the needle and seat. Yes. We're gonna set our calipers to 450 thousandths. And on the centermost point of the float- I see it. We wanna be 450 thousandths from the roof of the bowl to the underside of the float. And in doing that, like right now, we're there. Yep. And our needle and seat windows lined up, so we're good. Okay. What we'll do, we'll go over here now. Yep, I see it changing that. There's 450. Sure. But our window's not clocked. So. Let me see. There it is. Yes, I see it. So now turn the float. Yep, we're going to have to raise the float slightly. We want to start at 450 and then work up to clock that needle and seat window. Got it. So this one is actually going to be set at about 370 to get that window correct. And that's okay. It doesn't that have to okay. be the 450. Yeah, we'll, we'll because, start at 450. Yep. They can run slightly higher and then just raise the float yep. in order to clock that window. Okay. Now there's one more setting we can use to manipulate that. Most people are probably going to struggle. There's one more setting that okay. we can use to manipulate that. Most people are probably going to struggle with it, so the slight variance in float height is okay and okay. will run just fine. But when we send these floats out, we set this tab height here at 170 to 180 thousandths, and that is what the needle and seat is resting on. Uh, yes, so I see we it. can manipulate this tab height okay. to change the float level in yep, the bowl yep, yep. and not reclock the needle and seat. Got it. So that is an option now. Let's go over what it actually takes to get one of these out of the bowl. So first things first, if we're gonna change this, you're gonna wanna loosen your needle and seat lock, lock screw. yep. And now we're gonna screw the needle and seat out with the nut. Got that out. And now you're drain screw, which also doubles as a retaining screw for the insert. We're gonna pull that out of the side. You're gonna to have to turn the float, push it down, and wiggle the insert out. Now that we have it out, your retaining pin or your float hinge pin yep, is gonna come out. Sure. You're gonna remove that. Yep. And then you're gonna take your new, new float, float. Put it in, hinge pin. Put it back in. That's in there. Yep. Now we're gonna to go to our bowl here. Put our bottom feed insert back in there. Lightly uh, just snug up our retaining screw. Yep. And then you're gonna put your new needle and seat in. Sure. And repeat the process. We're gonna screw this down to get yep. Measure to our 450 thousandths. Yep. Get our window yep. lined up. Once we're happy with all that, we're gonna tighten our lock screw, go back and tighten our drain screw, yep. and we're done. That's it. It's a simple process. And when you see someone do it in person, that's what makes a difference, being able to see someone else doing it when you're trying to do this at home. And if you can watch this video and say, hey, yeah, this is what I have to do, it's gonna be you know, the next step to get you here ultimate in your program for sure it should be helpful for all of our customers to see this obviously trying to explain this process over the phone isn't always the easiest. oh yeah thing. what about so serviceability so that float does it last a year 
if what, what do you think? Maintained, okay. Um, what we recommend. So obviously methanol is a very corrosive sure. fuel and these nitrofill floats soak it in and get extremely heavy. Got it. So what we recommend to do is finish your race for the weekend, use yep. one of the bottom bowl screws or the drain screw and drain your carburetor. Got it. Get the alcohol out Yep. and get yourself a squirt bottle and just fill it up with either a good pump gas or a 110 gas, remove one of the top bowl screws and just fill the bowl back up with some kind of gasoline. Just regular, yeah. It's gonna be far better for it sitting. There's gonna be no corrosion there. Take your accelerator pump, pump it a few yep, times yep. so that you get the gas through, through the that system. circuit as well sure. so you don't get the sticky check needles and just leave it in. Um, the next time you go out, there's still gonna be a little bit of gas in the bowl. It's gonna start easier the first time and there's gonna be no corrosion inside the I like bowl it. from the alcohol. Thank you. And in doing that, you can probably get through a whole season on the floats. Um, otherwise, leaving the alcohol in, you're probably looking at minimum changing them twice a year. Okay. Now, when you said that, that the optimal setting for that float is 450 thousandths. Now, when we had done it, we got, what, 370? Yeah, we were 450 and 370. How much difference are you going to see in regards to use of that fuel in that bowl with that difference in, what, 80 thousandths or whatever it comes It's going to be very minimal. You're not really going to notice that much of a difference? No, because you've, you've got two needle and seat feeding the bowl. Okay. So the, the small variation in float setting is, is not going to be critical to the way it performs. Okay. You don't want to get it much higher than 350. There will be a chance that, you know, at idle and part throttle, it, it could possibly start to dump over and, and push fuel past the booster. There it you is. Don't want. Um, but anywhere from that 450 to 350 range should be okay. where you need to be. If, if we can't get in between there, we need to start playing with, you know, either shrinking Bending. this tab measurement down a little bit or opening it up slightly to, to get closer. Okay. Appreciate it. Anytime. There you go, guys. Another tip from APD, Joey at APD, on their float level adjustment for the, what is it, what do we call it, the dual for inlet? The dual and seat fuel bowl. There it is. Stay tuned.